got a dose. I got a dose. I got a dose. I got a dose. Around my neck, 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 around my neck. Party only like me cause her daddy don't. Took the show cause I don't got one of my own. I'm too gay to sign, I got no love to show. Hello again there guys and welcome back to another video. Okay, so the first step in the restoration of this M52B28 is going to be uh, rejuvenating the cylinder head. So, in order to do that, I'm going to do as follows. I am going to remove all the valves and clean them, and then I'm going to take the head to a machine shop to get it clean and decked. And the quote on that, on that was only 50 bucks for both. So that's pretty dang uh, cheap, I suppose, right? Now, in order to remove these valves, you need a certain valve spring compressor. And as you've seen in my intro of the my E46 Wagon Daily car, I missed that car, I haven't took a shot with it for a while. Anyway, at the end of that intro, you've seen that this video is brought to you by the company called Metric Mechanic. That is right. They are an awesome company based out of Missouri, and I'll get into more detail in, about them in a few moments. I'm currently waiting on a package from them, which includes a special tool to actually... Uh, compress four valve springs at once so it, it utilizes the studs for the uh cam traits so it bolts down and it compresses four valves at once making valve seal replacement very fast and easy and they've also have i've also got from them a kit it's a it's a shim kit and retainer kit for the valves to help stiffen it's a little shim that goes underneath the uh, retainers to help stiffen the valve spring so you have less less chance of valve flow and high rpms so once that kit gets here tomorrow, I'll be back in here in the garage, and I'll show you how the tool works. All right, guys, I'm back. I have received my kit, and I have brought it home, and I have unboxed it. So what we have here is my package contents from Metric Mechanic, and this is going to include a uh, valve spring compressor, version 1 and version 2. It is, they just sort of split the uh, compressor in half for whichever way you prefer to do it. So, this is the uh, shimmer retainer kit I was telling you about, also to stiffen up the valve springs. So, just for a quick little uh, visual for you guys, I want to take a stock valve spring and show you how this retainer kit works. So, here's one of your stock retainers. And then, here's the one supplied from Metric Mechanic. If you can look closely, you can see there's a thickness difference between the bases. So, this aftermarket retainer, along with a shim, and like I previously mentioned in the last clip, I got ahead of myself. These shims do not go, go underneath the retainers. They actually go underneath the valve springs themselves, and they rest in what's called the uh, spring perches. So, they rest down in the cylinder head. Your spring sits on top like that, and then their supplied retainers go in there. So, the combination of the shim and, the, and this uh, thicker style retainer... It gives you a better spring, uh, a stiffer spring pressure on your valve springs to lessen the chances of getting what's called valve float, which is potentially catastrophic to your engine. So it's because these engines have a, a issue with valves failing when they're pushed their, to their limits. It happens all the time. So if you're going to keep stock valve train, highly recommend getting this kit from Metro Mechanic. It's a simple bolt in solution and it will lessen the chances of you getting valve float. Moving on to the valve spring compressor, in a moment, I'm going to show you how this actually works. It's pretty neat. Like I said earlier, it utilizes the studs for the camshaft trays. And they supply you with these, you know, these little rods, or what we would call them, spacers. So you can actually begin to compress the valve springs. I'll show you how this gets set, set up in the head. And they also supply you with a really nice little valve stem seal driver. And it, accommod it, it uh, accommodates two sizes, 7 and 6 millimeter. Now, more commonly, we'll be using the 6 millimeters. Actually, there's one last thing I want to say before we get to work on the cylinder head. I apologize. This valve spring compressor is a versatile tool, meaning it not only works for E36 engines, it also works with E46 engines, meaning 
It can compress the valve springs of the M52 TUB series and the M54 series. So that was one more thing I wanted to bring up before we got to work. That this tool will also work with your E46 engines. All right, let's get to it, guys. All right, guys, we're here at the cylinder head now. I'm going to show you how to use this tool. But before that, I'm going to take a quick little drink. Oh, hell yeah. All right, so here is our beautifully designed, beautifully made valve spring compressor. You can see their awesome logo imprinted on it. And we're going to go for these four valves right here. So take our compressor. We're going to set it in here right over the studs like that. And there are the top of our valves. And then we're going to take four washers. We're going to place one over each stud. Next step is to get your spacers. Now there's two different lengths. So what you do with these is you put them in opposing corners. So we'll take both short ones. We'll do one in the left corner and then one in the lower right. So once again, opposing corners. Then we'll take our long ones and same thing. Bam. And bam. Then take our remaining washers which they include in their kit as well. They include the nuts, the washers, everything. Bam. Bam. Whammo. Okay. And then we have our four nuts to go ahead and begin to start on these studs. This is kind of challenging doing this one-handed, so please bear with me. <laughs> we'll get these started down. Now the objective is to uh, preferably bottom out the threads of the shorter ones first. And then these longer ones take up the rest of the slack and continuing compressing the valve springs, and which is the job of this tool, to compress the valve springs. Very simple, very easy to use. Now you can use power tools with this, but I personally find doing things with hand tools is more satisfying. I've just always been that way. Unless, you know, it's like removing a wheel or something or... Other stuff like that. But when it comes to like engine work, I prefer to use mainly hand tools for everything. So we have here an 11 millimeter, you know, socket on my 3 8 ratchet. So I like to do probably quarter turns, two of them. So you don't want to be going crazy. You don't want to be doing uneven pressure while you're compressing. I'm just going to go ahead and do like nearly half turns. And then we'll start doing the bigger ones to begin further compressing. There you go. You can see that, how it's beginning to compress. Jump to these ones. Now, sometimes you notice the valves will compress with the uh, valve spring. That is not, not what you want. Uh, usually what happens in that case is simply the uh, valve keepers, which are... These little pieces, focus on that. These little pieces right in there. They will sometimes stick in the retainer and it will draw down the valve with the retainer, which is no big deal. In that case, what I'll do is, since the uh, cylinder head is off the car, if it was on the car, you would have compressed air in the cylinders to hold the valves up. But we don't have that luxury right now because the cylinder head is off the car. So what I'll do is, if the valves are indeed sticking, the keepers are sticking, I'll flip the, the head up. You see how they, how they are sticking. The valves are somewhat open. And as you can see, they're not actually seized in the guides or anything. It's just those keepers stuck. So since this ratchet is a... I forget the material. It's, it's soft. It's not metal. I'll just do a little brisk smack and close the valves just like that. Maybe a little, little less pressure. But when they're first... Sometimes, sometimes when they're really stuck, you gotta give them a decent little whack. Nothing crazy, just to bring them back up. Just to loosen up the keepers. And then as you can see, that brought them up quite a bit. The keepers are beginning to, to come out of the retainers. Once again, this process would be much faster if I had both hands. But since we just have one hand, we're just gonna go at it with one freaking hand. Let's just continue compressing these. We'll jump back up to the short ones. I believe they're almost bottom out. Yes, they're pretty much bottomed out. 
that one is, that one is. And then we'll begin doing the, the, the taller ones. And I'll get you an angle right here so you can see the compressor doing its magic. We're almost there to get the keepers out. There they are, just like that. And at this point, you can easily get the keepers out because those are way out of the way out of the retainers. Now, my tools of choice, sometimes the keepers stay stuck on the valves a little bit. So, a little pick tool. And they literally just if this thing focuses, they'll just basically fall off like just like that. And then at this point, you know, a little magnet just like this, and you scoop out the retainers. Just like that. And there's both in one go. Now, I'm not going to keep these. I mean, I am keeping these. But they're going to go right here for now. Because I have another set of valves and retainers for this head. Then there's the retainers. They're keepers, I mean. They're just little little keepers. They just hold the, va the valve in place. Pretty neat. Now, in the future, come high horsepower build, you know, I'll also be doing probably hardened keepers and all that good stuff. But these will suffice just fine with the stiffening kit. Everything pairs together well, he said. I just made sure I asked him. I was like, hey, is this going to pair well with the stock keepers? He's like, yep, it'll be just fine. Like, okay, perfect. And that is the, the, uh, that is the removal of the keepers. And now the valves will literally just fall out. So just push them but right now we're against cardboard so i'm gonna pick the head back up and these valves should literally just come out just like that i skipped one there we go usually I keep these in order but like i said these valves right now are not relevant to me they're just coming out of this head because so i'm taking this head to uh the machine shop to get clean and decked one more valve right there pull it out of the head just like that, that's the valve removal. We'll just set these aside. We'll bring the head back down. And then the next step is to remove the compressor tool and then to remove your valve springs and your retainers. So, you know, just reverse process what you did before. Now what's nice is you can just go ahead and reverse these out fast because it'll just bottom out on these shorter ones again. So you don't have to worry about, you know, anything crazy going on. It'll level itself out. Grab our compressor and bring it up. Since I'm doing this one-handed, I'm gonna I'm gonna obviously drop some washers down the head, but that's totally fine. I'm gonna extract them. I'm not gonna leave them in there, obviously. I will try my best to keep them up. It's not gonna happen though, because of the way this is angled, they're gonna fall off. But no, well, maybe not. Look at that. Okay, and then here are the stock valve springs and retainers. Here's your retainer. And then there's a spring. And down in there is called the spring perch, like I was saying. So that those shims that I got from him, Metric Mechanic, they rest in these perches right around that. It's just a nice little shim. And this head's very dirty, so it's hard to see, but there are some nice grooves in there for you to lay things in. Like, you know, obviously the, the valve springs go in there. So I'm just going to take these out. Then below those are your little valve seals. They'll be getting replaced. But yeah, that's the demo how to use the valve spring compressor tool for Metric Mechanic. Wasn't the fastest process because of my filming uh, technique here, but it all worked out. Hey there guys, I'm back. Got my gloves off and everything. Now, you're probably wondering why I want to talk so bad about this company. Am I sponsored by them? No, I am not. I just feel that this company deserves advertisement because they don't have much advertisement out there. I'm sure you guys have heard of VAC Motorsports. If not, look into them. They're more widely known than Metric Mechanic. However, I feel that Metro Mechanic is just as good, if not superior to VAC. They're a nice company based in Missouri, and the magic doesn't really happen on their online online store or YouTube channel. The magic happens in their shop, because they build race engines, and the work they do is nearly impeccable. It's just, it's amazing. Now, I'm going to link, you know, their, uh, their website. I'm going to link their Facebook page, and I'll link their YouTube in my description. So you guys can check them out. 
I highly, highly recommend if anybody out there wants a race engine built by or wants a race engine for the BMW built, please contact these guys because uh, they they just their work is really good. And like I said, I just feel like they deserve the advertisement because I see the hard work they put into it. They 3D print their own pistons and have them made. Like they they legit blueprint engines, everything. It's 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 pretty mind boggling. Just talking to Tyler for those three hours, I myself learned so much about cam duration. How lift and all that stuff works. It's it's just I find that stuff super neat, and they deserve more business. I truly feel that they actually been in business for a long time. And here's an example: their their first ever turbocharged engine build. That engine is still running today, and it has over five hundred thousand miles on it. These guys build engines to outlive the cars that they go in. Very attention to to, to detail oriented and very friendly people as well. Also, before I forget. This company does not only offer engine builds, they do nearly everything, guys. They custom differentials, transmission installs, clutches. There's so much more that I know I'm forgetting to put in what they offer. It's not just an engine build place. They they do quite a lot for the BMW community. Oh, yes, and I also I got my timing cover drilled for my return hose. Return my drain. Sorry, my drain hose for the turbocharger. There's the hole in the side. And here's a 10 a.m. bung. It's going to go in there and get welded. But before that, my awesome boss let me borrow his little portable sandblaster. So I'm going to use some low PSI. Just quickly dust this off so the guys can get some good welds on here. Okay, so it's the next day here, and I got my timing cover sandblasted. It turned out pretty good. Look at that. It looks really nice. It focuses on the damn thing. Why is the picture so blurry? There we go. Turned out really nice, actually, for uh, just a portable sandblaster. I'm going to get that bad boy welded on, and bam. Also got the head the rest of the way, tore down, so it is now ready to be sent off. She is a bare head now, boys. And then in case you're curious about the valve cleaning, look at those intake valves. Pristine. So those are going to work out really good. And then the, the exhaust valves clean up pretty good as well. So yeah, that was all what I did was get this head prepared for the cleaning and whatnot. So in the next video, you'll probably see this head back here in mint condition cleaned up. And I'll begin reassembling this head using the parts. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.